Hey, all right, buckle up. Tonight, the sanctity of your vote in this country is at risk. As Americans, when we head to the polls on Election Day, we expect our votes to be safeguarded, to be tracked, counted by diligent, honest officials in accordance with the law. That did not happen in Southern Florida. Since election night, nearly 100,000 uncounted votes have just magically turned up in Liberal, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. We have no idea where the votes came from, where they've been, why they weren't counted last Tuesday. So many laws, we will outline this tonight, have been broken. Our inalienable rights have been spit on, and now, breaking just moments ago, our sources confirming tonight to Hannity, they are telling us a criminal investigation is, in fact, now underway. And coming up, we're going to show you why this crisis in Florida should deeply concern all Americans, not just Floridians. And tonight, we have warned you for months, the destructive Democratic agenda that they were hiding will wreak chaos across the country. Now they're finally telling us endless investigations, subpoenas, a quest for impeachment, not a single plan to improve the lives of the American people. So is now the top order of business in the Democratic-controlled House of Representatives? Just destroy Trump. The Pelosi destroy Trump House. Now we're going to show you how Pelosi, Waters, Schiff, Nadler and company are hitting the ground running. It's everything they purposely did not tell you before the midterms that they have been planning all along. All right, sit tight, buckle up. A lot to cover tonight. It'll take the full hour. We start with our breaking news opening monologue. All right, less than a month ago, a massive Category 4 hurricane made landfall on the Gulf Coast of Florida in the Panhandle. 35 counties were under a state of emergency. 155 mile per hour winds wreaking havoc throughout the panhandle. The destruction, as you can see, as we saw, was horrific. Entire blocks were literally wiped away. The area sustained billions upon billions of dollars in damage. But on November the 6th, Floridians in the panhandle, they went to the polls and their votes were counted, every single one of them, on time in accordance with Florida law and Florida's constitution. Sadly, the same cannot be said in Southern Florida. In Palm Beach, Broward counties, we are witnessing a colossal disaster. Laws have been broken. Florida's constitution ignored. None of this was caused by a hurricane, but rather by local officials who are incompetent, corrupt, and obviously feel they are above the law that 65 other Florida counties, 65 of 67, adhered to. In Palm Beach County, at least 15,000 new ballots were unearthed and counted after election night. And in Broward County, almost 75,000 so-called uncounted votes magically turning up day after day after day after the election. Tens of thousands of lost ballots just seemingly appeared out of thin air. The vast majority, of course, cast by Democrats. Now, this should not, let me be straightforward, this should not be Republican Democrat, conservative, liberal. This is this shouldn't be about politics. This is much deeper. Whatever your political affiliation, what we're witnessing is a horrific miscarriage of America's most fundamental rights and a serious potential now criminal violation. The law is clear. It is unambiguous. Florida law, let's put it on the screen, quote, says, the canvassing board shall report all early voting all tabulated vote by mail results to the Department of State within 30 minutes after the polls close. The law continues, quote, the canvassing board shall report with the exception of provisional ballot results, updated precinct election results to the department at least every 45 minutes until results are completely reported. 65 of Florida's 67 counties, they complied with the law including every county in the panhandle that was absolutely ravaged by Hurricane Michael 27 days prior to the election. Broward, Palm Beach counties totally ignored the law, broke the law. For days, Broward County officials continued to tally literally tens of thousands of votes in violation of state law. It appears yet again we have one system of justice and, ele for, and elections for Democrats and another for the rest of us. Now, the supervisor of elections in Broward County, a woman by the name of Brenda Stipes, 
would not even tell state officials where these mysterious votes were coming from, where the votes had been, how many votes were left to be counted. Again, a violation of law. There was no updating of votes every 45 minutes. Again, violating the law. And this morning, multiple boxes full of sample and provisional ballots left behind in some rental car were actually discovered by an Avis employee at Fort Lauderdale Airport. This is insanity. You know, we send election observers to other countries. We need them here. And on Friday, Florida Congressman Matt Gates literally blocked from observing a location where ballots were being loaded into a truck. Take a look for yourself. Why can't we watch what's going on, man? We're told you can't be here, so you got to... Who told you that we can't watch what's going in and out of the truck? My supervisor. You Who's your super? Yeah, I would love to see him. Okay. But until then, let's go. All right, all right. Well, you tell me why, why we can't know what's going in and out of that truck. And who? what's the name of your supervisor? We'll, we'll get all that taken care of. Do you, know his, do you know his or her name? The supervisor's name? Yeah. What's their name? We'll bring them out to you in a second. Do you know their name? Yes. We'll bring them out. What is it? Will you tell it to me? We'll bring them out to you in a second. What's on the truck? What we're seeing in, in South Florida is a national disgrace, and it's far worse than that. Broward Palm Beach County has violated any chance of there ever being any real integrity in the vote in Florida. We will never have any chance of knowing what the accurate vote tallies were from this past election now in the state of Florida. That has been ruined. That's off the table. And tonight, all we really know for certain is that the, quote, newly counted ballots have drastically tightened the election and subsequently triggering statewide recounts, all because of what is gross incompetence, corruption at the Broward County Supervisor of Elections Board and Brenda Snipes. Now, she has a history of this. Late last week, we had a judge ruling that Brenda Snipes actually violated state election law. Now, what is even more outrageous is that this is not new for Ms. Snipes. Now, her track record is literally atrocious. Why she was even in this position is beyond any understanding. How she's been allowed to continue in this powerful position, beyond comprehension. Last week, we learned that Snipes, quote, accidentally mixed in rejected provisional ballots with several hundred valid votes. That means the entire vote count has been irreversibly corrupted. And just this past August, a judge ruled that Snipes systematically had mishandled mail-in absentee ballots. In 2017, a judge also ruled she illegally destroyed ballots following a primary race. And in 2016, some Broward County election results were posted online, get this, before the polls had even closed. And in 2012, 1,000 uncounted absentee ballots, well, they were mysteriously discovered in Broward County a week after that election. And in 2004, Snipes simply lost track of 6,000 absentee ballots. Now, this is the woman that could determine the outcome of these important races for the Senate and the governor's race in Florida. Now, many Floridians are rightfully calling for consequences. Former Governor Jeb Bush tweeting out, there is no question the Broward County Supervisor of Elections, Brenda Snipes, failed to comply with Florida law on multiple counts undermining Floridians' confidence in our electoral process, Supervisor Snipes should be removed from her office following the recounts. Um, maybe now. I don't think we should wait. Senator Marco Rubio, very vocal also about Snipes and her incompetence and corruption, tweeting, quote, every vote legally cast and received within time frame required by law should be counted. The issue in Florida has been repeated violations of election law by the incompetence and the lack of transparency of Palm Beach elections, Broward County elections. And now Snipes could, in fact, tonight be facing criminal charges. Sources have confirmed to us on multiple levels tonight a criminal investigation into election misconduct in South Florida is now ongoing. Just a short time ago, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi released a letter from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement stating that they will work with the Attorney General Bondi on any criminal investigation and subsequent prosecution of Brenda Snipes or anyone else who may have broken laws and committed voter fraud. Now, of course, the damage has been done. Florida Governor turned Senate elect, Senator elect Rick Scott is now sounding the alarm. You don't just magically find 93,000 votes laying around unless you need smoke for cover. That's why this is so problematic. Take a look. 
Bill Nelson is clearly a sore loser. He can't stand the fact that he's not going to be elected for, what, the first time in decades. And he won't. He's, he's just here to steal this election. That's what he's done. His lawyer came down here and said, I'm here to win the election. I'm not here to get a, get a free and fair election, make sure votes are, ca are counted. No, he wants to win the election. That's his only purpose. Now, make no mistake, when the dust settles here, Rick Scott and Ron DeSantis will take their rightful place as senator and governor of Florida. But tonight, Democratic operatives, they are trying to prevent all of that from happening. On Friday, lawyers for the Gillum and Nelson campaigns, they actually objected to a judge, to non-citizens' votes being rightfully denied. In other words, they want votes from non-citizens to now count. Where is their integrity in all of this tonight? That means they only care about power, nothing else. Rule of law means nothing to them, and it gets even worse. Nelson just hired an attorney. His name is Mark Elias. His name may sound familiar to you. He's the left-wing hack at the very center of Hillary Clinton's attempt to rig the 2016 election with that phony dossier. Remember Clinton, the DNC, paid millions to Elias and his firm, Perkins Coie? Yeah, that firm. To dig up the Russian dirt, hire Fusion GPS, hiring a foreign national, Christopher Steele, an ex-foreign spy, subsequently put together a, a dirty dossier full of Russian lies that not even Christopher Steele stood by. That campaign opposition research, remember, it was distributed across all of Obama's DOJ by Steele as credible, nonpartisan information. The contents leaked to the press before the 2016 election. Remember, David Korn's article, October 31st, 2016, only days before the election, he reported that, quote, a veteran spy has given the FBI information alleging a Russian operative to cultivate Donald Trump. And let's not forget about Michael Lizikoff's Yahoo report, September 2016, alleging Russian collusion. Democrats were trying to rig the election with the help of Hillary's bought and paid for foreign nationals using Russian lies. Remember, none of it was ever confirmed. Most of it's been debunked. And as you can see, Elias, he's a very experienced Democratic operative. And of course, he's also been involved in past recounts. His quotes will shock you. In 2013, he said, those who have seen past recounts in Virginia know that they tend to, uh, do not tend to change the results. By the way, there was only a 167 vote advantage for the guy he's representing. The next year, he said, quote, recounts really only happen where you are talking about dozens or a few hundred votes separating candidates. Gee, Mark, I wonder why the change of heart. Gun for hire, say anything, just, you know, make the rules up as you go along. Now, of course, the Democrats, they pretty much wrote the book on election rigging during the 2016 election. I seem like the only one that's pointed this out. We all know the Democratic primary. We know it was fixed for Hillary Clinton. Remember former interim DNC chair Donna Brazile admitting this on my radio show. Remember, she had actually used the word rigged. She kind of tried to back off it in this interview, but she admits she used it. Take a listen. What I said in the book was that in exchange for bailing out the party, which was broke, the Clinton campaign would get control over certain decisions and aspects of the DNC that made it difficult, if not impossible, for me to do my job. It was unethical, but it was not rigged, and I stand by that. But you said you actually used the word rigged. Of course, because I promised Bernie that I would go department by department and do a forensic uh, uh, test to find out what happened. She used the word rigged herself. Then she tells the story how Bernie was robbed by the DNC machine that Clinton was controlling, the cancer, as she called it. Hangs up the phone after having to tell Bernie Sanders the truth, said she cried out of anger over this. So we have one system of justice and elections for Democrats, just like we have one system of justice for the Clintons and another one for anyone who opposes them. This is not equal justice under the law or equal application of our laws. Now, tonight, we're going to bring you updates all throughout the hour from Florida as they become available. But a criminal investigation, let me repeat, is ongoing as we speak. Now, whatever happens in Florida, here's one thing. I know the Democrats are all excited because they got control of the House of Representatives. By the way, the president, in retrospect, now that he went out and fought for all those Senate candidates and Republicans picked up those seats and that in the Senate... By the way, turn the blue wave into a little baby blue trickle. 
because now Democrats are doing exactly what I told you they would do. They're now coming clean, the things they weren't saying on the campaign trail about what their real plan is, to wage what is a never-ending, full-scale investigation into anything and everything Donald Trump to destroy this president. And according to new reports, Pelosi and company, get this, they are planning to launch a subpoena cannon at the Trump White House, firing on all cylinders with a political hit list of nearly 100 targets, meaning 100 investigations, tax returns, Stormy Jan Daniels, James Comey, the impeachment of Justice Kavanaugh, Shifty Schiff wants to actually investigate the president's treatment of CNN, the Washington Post, Amazon. Democrats are stopping at nothing to pursue the unhinged campaign to halt President Trump and his progress. By the way, that means our progress. That means America's progress. And of course, this is a plan of endless investigations. By the way, very few facts. Nancy Pelosi is actually saying Democrats don't need an indictment to move forward on their impeachment fantasies, while she and other Democrats fuel even more baseless hysteria about Mueller's Russia probe. House Democrats, they have been working overdrive to now smear the acting Attorney General, Matt Whitaker, which was the president's lawful choice, period. And don't forget, Rod Rosenstein, who's been running this whole thing, is conflicted in multiple ways, like signing the last FISA, writing the letter recommending that Comey get fired. But he's still been running it. They didn't care about his conflicts. Take a look. I want to make this very clear. Uh, if he doesn't recuse himself, if he has any involvement whatsoever in this Russia probe, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to find out whether he made commitments to the president about the probe, whether he is serving as a back channel to the president or his lawyers about the probe, whether he's doing anything to interfere with the probe. Mr. Whitaker needs to understand that he will be called to answer, and any role that he plays will be exposed to the public. Uh, we, we don't want there to be any ambiguity about that. You don't have confidence in him as America's no, top I enforcement don't. officer. Uh, no, I don't. And I uh, don't just take it from me. There's bipartisan. Uh, editorializing about this that that he should never have been appointed and that uh, it, that it, it, it does violence to the Constitution and the vision of our founders to appoint such a person in such a manner uh, to be the chief legal officer in our country and that's bipartisan I'll go further the, the his appointment is simply part of an attack on the investigation by Robert Mueller, the special counsel. It's part of a pattern of interference by the president, a part of a pattern of obstruction of that, uh, attempt of obstruction of that investigation. The only problem is no one's talking about meddling with the Mueller probe. Nobody. The president has said twice in the last week, no. So ask yourself, the House Democrats, is there a single agenda item that they are advocating that will make your life better. Any one agenda item that's gonna create more jobs, make this country safer, build a brighter future for our kids and our grandkids. Well, we know the answer tonight is no. It's all part of what I've been telling you. They've been hiding what their agenda is really all about. It slip out occasionally, and then they tell everybody stop, which is mobilizing their political hit list. Get revenge. They didn't like the results of the 2016 election. By the way, they didn't like the results of this last election. They want to shield their own deep state corruption and put this country's future at risk. What they ought to be focused on is our kids and our grandkids and law and order and equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws. And yes, yeah, something called our Constitution. Yeah, the document from which all laws originate from, our founding Constitution. All right. All right, joining us now with more reaction to tonight's breaking news, Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce and for former DOJ official, election lawyer at the Public Interest Legal Foundation, Jay Christian Adams. Jay, you have been there. You've been following this. Let's go back to what you're seeing on the ground, what people need to know, how bad is this, and do you agree with Andy McCarthy's assessment that uh, he doesn't believe it will ultimately impact the final results, which is that Rick Scott will be the next senator and DeSantis will be the next governor. Uh, Andy is right. Recounts usually confirm the existing tally. But, Sean, what you're seeing is astonishing incompetence. We sued Brenda Snipes for incompetence in maintaining the voter rolls. And I got to know her very well. I got to know her employees. She was my witness on the stand at a federal court trial 
where she admitted non-citizens are on the voter rolls in Broward. They're voting. She doesn't turn them in when she finds out about them. She admitted there's felons illegally voting. She doesn't call the police when she finds out about them. There are people on her voter rolls who were born, they have birth dates when Grover Cleveland was president in Broward County. So I got to see close up how incredibly incompetent both Brenda Snipes is, as well as her entire staff. So this is not just her, it's the whole office. Well, and, and we see that, Tammy, because it keeps happening year in and year out. This is nothing new. And I go back to the simple point, and based on what Jay Christian Adams is saying here, why is she there? But more importantly, the, the rest of Florida is hurt by this. And now they're being hurt dramatically by this. And their vote ultimately is is in jeopardy really in the end well right that every false vote every um, uh, illegitimate vote that's counted erases the vote of an american citizen uh, and that of course it makes a mockery of the entire system but i i would take one issue with one word of of our friend uh, jay christian uh, about incompetence this is intent uh, and I think that it's very important, and, and Republicans and conservatives tend to expect the best of people, uh, but the fact is, the left, uh, it, you can't presume that they mean well. They do not. And this is a matter of, you know, the, the ends justify, it justifies the means. Uh, and it's about, it's not even about winning. Winning, of course, implies that you followed the rules and you've, conv and you've persuaded people. This is about stealing power. And that's what we're seeing unfold here. And I have to say, you know, the, the the problem with the FBI and the DOJ, everything we've seen there with that corruption and the degree that they went to to try to invalidate an American presidential election, I have to uh, suggest, I think it's pretty obvious, that kind of a problem didn't just exist as a, an isolated issue within the federal government. I think it's throughout the system that now presumes it's completely in charge and that these elections are charades and that they're meant to give the impression to the American people uh, that their vote counts, whereas in fact you saw Hillary's reaction action of the shock that something didn't happen in a predetermined way. So I think we have to take this very seriously and recognize, and, and look, you asked Rick Scott uh, a night or two ago, uh, uh, or maybe at the end of last week, uh, how, why is she still there? Because, you know, he's been the governor, uh, and he really didn't answer you. And that's what concerns me as well, the system allowing a woman like that to continue to operate, because in a way, this kind of uh, chaos uh, maybe suits the establishment establishment in general, not just the Democrats. And by the way, we're watching the recount as it takes place, say, even as we speak. We expect by Wednesday that Ron DeSantis will be declared the winner. I think that it's the 19th, Jay Christian, if I'm not wrong, that, that Rick Scott would be declared the winner in that particular race. But I, I, I want to go back to, to Brenda Snipes and her team and how many hours you spent and what other things you learned about her on top of that which we already know. Look, Sean, the trial went on for two weeks. They, they were losing things. I mean, we, we, in Discovery, we asked for their manuals and procedures on how they keep the voter rolls clean. They couldn't find any until the third day of trial when they sprung it on us. Uh, and, and it's just astonishing levels of incompetence and, and chaos. I mean, you've never seen anything like it. And of course, then they ascribed race. They said they were being sued because of racial issues. It's the same playbook we see everywhere. But I want to warn you, Palm Beach is going to be a problem. Palm Beach has outdated equipment. They can't do a, a paper ballot manual recount. By the way, paper ballots share a lot of the blame here, too. It, it well, well, what happens the when they down. talk about overvotes and undervotes and, oh, there's a mark over here, but not over here where you're supposed to do it? They're going to say, well, that, the intent is there for that. And in, in the one case where they went before the judge and they literally, both Gillum and Nelson's lawyers have said, no, we want that to count. And that one, it was one vote, but one vote shows the lack of integrity. Look, I think this entire dynamic shows uh, what uh, Governor DeSantis is going to be up against and what he's going to have to do and what Senator um, um, Scott is, uh, is now up against. They've got to clean this up. Florida is too important of a state. The, it affects the entire nation. And for every citizen, Democrat or Republican, the legitimacy of these elections is key. Both of those men have got to step up and take the Donald Trump approach of being street smart and working first for the American people well, I want and to see, they're gonna have the opportunity I hope now that we know a criminal investigation is underway um, I want to see everybody will now have to testify let's see if we can get to the bottom of this problem is you can't that's not gonna be something that gets done very uh, expeditiously